welcome to part two of our conversation with Bishop Plato Angelakis and Sister Kia. What I'm kind of curious about is you were talking earlier about the dog kind of showing you where things were at. Has anyone ever done yeah. that or try that? Like, right. you know what, we're going to get a dog. We're going to teach it kind of what to look for. And then for the, the times where Sister Key is not available, there's nobody else that's available, bring the dog. Would, do, what, that almost seems like it might be a sensible thing because well, people like Sister Kia are few and far between to find them. And, and, and those that know their abilities, like, like she does, uh, would it be, I mean, it's essentially kind of like canary in a coal mine. Uh, it wouldn't be as good by any means as what you'll True. get out of someone like Kia, but well, well, I, well I, I suppose that that is a that's one idea I never really thought of. I mean, you could you could you could train a dog. I mean, the military trains dogs yeah. to find bomb and you know and and whatnot. And and yeah, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, most animals in the house are usually pretty sensitive anyway. And yeah. I think, you know, they they actually will bark. I mean, I I pulled out the Eucharist one time when I like I usually don't use the Eucharist, but I will pull it out. And and uh, to to fight uh, something uh, bad because the Eucharist is quite powerful. And I remember the dog. The dog. I pulled the Eucharist out. The dog was just going crazy because obviously, whatever was there was reacting to the Eucharist. So the dog was barking at it, whatever it was. You know. So there there are ways to use that. But I think you know we got to be really careful because you know. I mean, a dog can. I mean, I mean, I, I think a dog would have to be extremely trained. Um, but then again, you know, I I, I think. People are better, and and, and, and you say there's the few far between. There are a lot, a lot of people who have gifts. They just need to need to cultivate them. I think they've been brainwashed and sort of taught to think, oh, this is taboo. I shouldn't, I shouldn't do this. You know, the, the church doesn't like this, or my family doesn't like that. I just think that you know, I find that more, a lot of people are they have wonderful gifts. They just need to be, they need to be encouraged, lifted up, how to cultivate it. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of them to do it in a safe environment so that you know they don't need to be like judged or anything and and uh, and 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 allow them to practice it and practice their gift you know, then they become really really good at it um but yeah I mean, that dog that's, that is a concept but I, I again I, I mean you know I you know, I mean for me uh, I really have I would have, really have to train the dog and test the dog and yeah. trust the dog and uh, I'm, I'm, it, not, I'm not I'm not that, that, I mean I'm I'm, I'm dealing. With, I'm dealing with. I mean, I'm dealing with people, with real, real people who yeah. have real problems. And that's another thing. You know, a lot of people take this stuff like it's a joke. You know, I'm gonna yeah. send a paranormal team in, and I'll, you know, I'll charge five hundred dollars, and I'm gonna, you know, put my put my cameras out and my audio equipment, my EVP mm-hmm. meters, and you know, and and say, oh, you know, you have uh, you have uh, activity here. Uh, okay, that's all. Wrap up. Let's go home now. And don't, yeah. And don't help the client. And then, you know, so you know, these people, these are real people with real yeah. problems. Uh, real families, they have financial hardships, they're having uh, uh, health issues, all because of uh, some infestation or uh, an attachment. And, uh, and uh, you know, and I want to help them. So I, for me, to, to trust the dog, to, you know, to make sure that I have everything cleansed, uh, I, I have, I have yeah. too, too much value in, in the clients that I have to deal with. I would rather sure. have sensitive like, yeah, yeah. Sure, sure. Can, uh, since we're kind of on the topic, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm curious, and, and the dog just barked, uh, Ken, oh, perfect uh, timing! That's my dog. That's my, oh, perfect that's my timing! Dog, you know? <laughs> he knows what he's telling you right now. He's like, "No, I can help. Damn it, I can help." Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Have, yeah. have you ever been in a situation where, um, you know, obviously you talked about a, a dog that you know it was acting up strange, and that kind of keyed you into a certain area? Have you ever had or right. heard of, of situations where a pet uh, or an animal? Uh, has become possessed or has an attachment of its own. I haven't really dealt with any animals. Uh, I know I've heard that there has been, but I haven't. I think the only to, only to the extent where a, a, a demon will try or a, a devil or someone will, will try to leave a person and try to occupy another bodily space, which it could be uh, you know another animal, while it's making transition to somebody else. You know, you, you, you can exercise some somebody, but you want to make sure that entity is actually sent back to where it, you know where it belongs, and not necessarily uh, you know go to uh, to an animal. I mean, the, Jesus did it, right? I mean, Jesus first was exorcism. He did, yeah. You know, legion, right? Well, yeah, he he put him in the in the swine, right? You yeah. know, he says he, the, the demons the demons asked uh, the that said, "Don't send us back. We know you're the God." You know, don't send us back, uh, whatever, uh, send us into the swine. And that's what Jesus did. But then the swine went into the water 
and drown. So, um, you know, so it's basically, you know, a lot, uh, you know, you leave the body, but then they try to find uh, other people or, or animals or something that they can occupy while they're in transition to perhaps infestate something else or someone else. So, um, you know, when you're when you're trying to exercise someone, I try to make sure that those those entities are going like oh, not to anybody else in the home. That's why we make sure that. Uh, we protect everybody in the family, mm -hmm. uh, the home, yeah, but, and uh, the an the animals are protected too. Like exactly, we will, yeah. we will put holy oil on the animals. Like I think I put holy oil on a gerbil one time, right? Just because it could be a living vessel. So sure. I mean, kind of, you know, just to make sure. And uh, you know how you were asking how we do it. We work from the inside, yeah, or from the outside in kind of thing. So there's nowhere for it to run because we kind of seal the outside of the house first and come in and and, and work that way. And then uh, you know everybody has to do confession with Father Plato, and uh. you know there's there's a procedure to, and medical forms and disclosures. And I do some I do health history and I you know, do quick physical examination, blood pressure, oxygen levels, check mm -hmm. the pupils, you know, that sort of thing, <clears throat> excuse me, and make sure that the person is all right. And if they need a break, then, you know, we check their vitals through throughout if there's an issue there. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, you know, it helps being nurse to, to do that for sure. Yeah, we, we want to make so. sure that they're, they're they're healthy enough to actually undergo a possession, uh, an exorcism, should I say, they need to be able to handle like you know and i want to know what their health history is because you know i want to know because they don't have any mental health you can have mental health and still be possessed sure you can have both so it, it really you know but I, I mean i remember I was just thinking of one case that i did i uh, like i said we i do i do so around the house and i make sure that all the members all the members of the family all the animals are in the home they do not nobody nobody leaves until it's done uh, because uh, people try to say open a window and do some sage and let it go out the window no i i make sure that they, that does not escape i don't want it to actually leave and I remember going to the one house uh, I did recently out near Detroit area, like Windsor, Detroit. And uh, the sensitives had gone through the house and said, well, it was the son who brought it into the home, but it, it was attached to the mother because it liked the mother, but it was the son who brought it in. That was what, what, what two of them actually said uh, when they, they came back, you know, individually, they didn't talk to each other, said that it came from this room, it was the son's room, it was the son who brought it in, and it was attached to the mother. And it was funny that I said, okay. And then the father was saying, oh, what's going on? And that one son actually wanted to leave. I actually had left the house and I made the father tell the son to come back. And then when the son came back, I, I blessed him. And then I blessed everybody. And I made, I made sure that he left. And now, of course, the house is cleansed. And so the person is, is gone. But he wanted to leave. The son wanted to leave. So you can see, you know, he brought it in. And all of a sudden, he wanted to, he wanted to leave. Well, you know, whatever my efforts would have been, would have been in vain because you know it left and then of course we we would be gone and he would just return and nothing would have happened so that's why i don't let anybody leave because i don't know who's brought it in and who's actually you know uh you know i don't know the whole dynamics but uh but it's funny how, uh, when i get i use these people with gifts they tell me oh it was the sun it's the sun and it came it came in via the sun but it's attached to the mother it's for some whatever reason um but it, uh, again there's a connection with the sun so i make sure the sun did not leave and he did leave, and the father actually called him and said, "Come on back." And he didn't want to, but he we made him come back. And then once he came back, he stayed. And then everything was very successful. But again, I wouldn't know that, Tony, if I, if I didn't have people telling me sure. that I'd be like, I, I just go, I would just go in and do my thing, and and not really know that, you know, the son has had a, a direct impact or a connection with the mother, and and how this this is all kind of trans, mm -hmm. you know, how it all how it came to be. So you know, again, it's. It's it's uh in, in closing you put yourself into a bubble you enclose yourself into a situation everybody that all the members are there family members uh, the animals everything is there no one leaves until it's done and that way we, we make sure that we don't let it escape um, um, and you know and that's the whole you know, we don't want anybody else you know affected by that so again that's just one example but that's that's, the that's why I find that this is very successful is mm -hmm. you know I, I've got I, I've got people with multiple eyes I, I got people who see at multiple levels that can help me because without that I, i'll tell you i i, I today i don't know i wouldn't even know what to do now without sure. without those gifts you know, sure. uh, honestly you had mentioned earlier um when you go into a, a case now you're not even always looking at it as a demonic presence you're looking at it as some sort of presence that there is there if you're not performing right. an exorcism or, or helping rid something that is demonic 
what exactly are you exercising? Well, you know, it's, 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 you know, first of all, I need consent from the person. The person needs to tell me I want to be liberated. So again, you know, that's a positive, like that's, that's something positive, right? So, you know, I, I get told that we need like, you know, we do confession, whatever, and reconciliation. Again, it, 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 I don't even have to go, I go beyond the ritual, the Roman ritual. I, I, I can just say it's basically trying to help a person, you know, uh, say, I, I, I really want this thing gone, whatever it is. So you do have free will. I mean, you do have free will. <laughs> and so my, my, my goal is to, to get that free will back to the person so they can actually make that decision and say, I don't want this anymore. I don't want this in me anymore. And you, you do have that kind of power in for yourself to say, you know, I want this thing out of my house. I know you don't I always need an exorcist. You know, you can say, I want this thing out of my home. I don't want that. I have, there's boundaries here. I don't want you here. You know, whether it's an earthbound spirit or, or a demonic or any, or any, or any, uh, you know, uh, uh, effects, any, any infection at all that's going on. You know, you just say, you know what, this is my home. This is my boundary. I want you gone. I want it. I want, you know, it's like enough's enough. But you have to want it, and you have to actually work at it. It's not its not just me coming in and waving a magic wand with a Kia, you know, and then it's gone, you know. It, it's, it's, I'm not Harry Potter. <laughs> These people have to work. You know, I give them prayers. I give them, like, you know, you have to start going to church, start doing whatever whatever works for you. You don't have to do it. You know, I, don't, I, I help anybody that, that's not even Catholic. I don't care. I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care. It's, 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 I need you to change your attitude and your, your, your belief and that I want to, to get better. I, don't, I want this in my home. I'm taking, I'm taking control of myself. I'm taking control of my own of my, of my own senses, my own abilities, and saying, you know, that it's empowering people, trying to empower them to say, you know, you know and, then, and then they have to carry on their journey. Because I'm gone. I'm gone with Sister Kate. We're gone. We're not coming back. You know, we, we've done our thing. Now it's up to them to carry on, you know, start praying together as a family or doing things positive, change their errant ways. Whatever you're doing that's wrong, change it. Um, you know, and, and, and make those make those those things, you know, um, you know, to be fruitful in your family, in your home. Right? You know, they get all that positive uh, vibes going, whatever it is. And I, I don't know. I mean, I've I've heard people say, you know, they've seen uh, you know aliens, sort of like interdimensional beings, you know, uh, affect people to 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 control them in, in a way to control their behavior so that they they go out and do something that might be you know you know in the in the world, you know that to. to I don't know, like, you know, who knows, right? I mean, they're talking about politicians, the people who have, who are in, in positions of authority are being infiltrated by, you know, aliens and whatever. I mean, I'm hearing this kind of thing. And I, and I mean, I, am, I I know some people have said they've seen it. Um, they've seen it, they're seeing it in their eyes. You know, and it's not, it's not necessarily demonic because they're not, they're not, they're not, afflicted, they're not afflicted. They don't, they don't seem demonic. They don't, they're not like, they're not acting like they're possessed and, you know, and they're screeching and howling and, you know, you know, like, doing all kinds of things, you know, like they, 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 they you normally see, you just, you just see ordinary people living ordinary lives, but you can see it in their eyes that, they're, that they've are that they got some kind of agenda. There's something going on behind the scenes within themselves, whether they, they they voluntarily allow that to happen for whatever purpose, but they're 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 in a position of authority and they're obviously having some kind of effect in society, whether in, in, in their decision-making. So there is some kind of influences going on and I'm, I'm starting to see that and people are talking about it. I'm, I'm investigating more, so it, I'm willing to help anybody, you know, and, and and to find a way. But again, it all depends on it. There are people who do not want to be uh, exercised. They don't want to be helped. Leave me alone. I'm happy with what I, I'm doing. You know, they don't want that. So that, under those circumstances, we can't do anything. I have to have their consent. Even mm-hmm. in the Roman Catholic Church, you know, in Rome, Vatican, you have to have that undivided, I, that consent. I want. I don't want us here anymore. I, Which, by the know, way, Plato did study at the Vatican. He didn't mention that before, but he's no. he's he studied the exorcism course at the Vatican as well. So yeah, so this is so there's yeah, I was supposed to go there, but because of the COVID, I didn't get a chance to physically go to Italy. But I mean, mm-hmm. they did online courses instead. So I, you know, but they, they, they went into they, they went into the mental health part and how to distinguish between one or the other. But the, but the primary thing is you have to have consent. You walk in. You know, what do you want? I want to be healed. I want to be liberated from this. And then with the consent, that empowers you to help them to do what they need to do uh, to, to get to get rid of that. And then they have to also do the work. They have to do the work themselves. They have to make their, the, the changes in their lives. Like, some people, oh, I mean, I've had people call me, and then it's, it's just a kid knows about this. People call me and say, well, I don't really believe in God at all. I'm an atheist. But can you come and help me get rid of this thing? You know, and then I want to go back to my life the way it was. <laughs> it's like, well... 
I kind of use God you know, in what I do. So if you don't believe in God, this is not going to work. So, you know, there's people just want to be helped. Or I've had people say, you know, I lost my wife, I lost my job, I lost my home, I must be possessed. No, you just lost your home, you lost your wife, you lost your job. <laughs> you're not possessed. So, you know, you get so many people who don't, don't, don't really understand what's what, like, they, they just think that, you know, everything's going bad in my life, that I must be affected by a demon. No, life. Sometimes life is, um, life is just it's, 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 sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it sucks, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it sucks to be you, you're not possessed. Yeah. So I tell you, but, but I mean, you know, but I mean, I'll give you a blessing regardless. But but you know, but again, you know, if you if we find that you that they are, we have to ask for consent. And I and I'll be honest with you, I've had a lot of people say, "I don't want help." Yeah. Okay. And, and you know, their, their their daughters or their kids might call me and say, "My mom or my dad or whatever," and and I'll go. You know, and, but it's the kids who want that. The actual individual has said no. I actually uh, exercised one person years ago, and after I exercised them, the lady says, "I want it back." I want the demon back. I said, what do you mean? I want it back. Because she said, I've lived with this thing for so many years. Now I feel empty without it. And 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 uh, and, and, and it came back. It came back. And then I said, help you. She called me about I think, uh, six months later saying, no, come help me. I said, I can't because you asked for it back. Like, like you know, like it's really that serious. And, and yeah. like, apparently she was actually worse off than I, when I found her. But she specifically said her, I guess her, her, her is that parents. The one that, is that the one that broke her arm? Yes. To get out yeah. of the restraints? Yeah, it was. Yeah, yeah she. Yeah, she. Yeah, she threw us across the room. Uh, oh my god! Four adult males, including. Yeah, she's a sixty-year-old woman hadn't eaten in a month. Her daughter was the one who said she needed help. So I went to her and I said, "You know, do you want this gone?" I said, yeah, "Okay, whatever." And and she broke through the her, her restraints, broke her arm. Uh, we had the uh, the police were involved because she pulled a knife on us and everything. And it was, uh, it was. I mean, it, it it took two days, obviously, when it was one of my first ones. So I mean, I learned a lot from that as well. But you know, I learned that she she was not completely uh, convinced that she wanted this thing gone. And then when it was gone, she felt empty, asked for it back, and it came back. You know, I said, "Well, I can't help you now because you've asked for it back." You know, <laughs> you know, it's all about consent, right? And you really have to be careful, uh, you know, what you ask for and what you want, you know, you know what what you want. I mean, I tell these paranormal teams when they go in, when they go in for an investigation, I said, "Watch your words, you know, watch what you say and how you say it." Because you say, "Well, you know, you know." Turn my life, turn my flashlight on, or hit me, hit me again. Tell me you're here, or you know, like, you know, uh, you know, do whatever. Like, you really gotta be, gotta be careful because you know, you know, they live in the spiritual realm. We live in the physical realm. We, 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 we are not really supposed to go into their realm. We're not supposed to go into our realm unless we give consent. And of course, a lot of us do give consent inadvertently, you know, sometimes or intentionally. And you know, I mean, like I said, people, you go every time you go into a paranormal situation where there's activity, you're knocking on, you're knocking on the spirit world door and you know you might be knocking on Satan's door and you know what they're going to answer they're going to answer you're you're giving and you're going in there and you're saying you know hey who are you tell me who you are you know speak to us talk into the spirit box uh you know do this you're, you're telling them to do you're giving them consent to come into our realm and you know and then, then they then they cry foul when they go home and they say well we brought home an attachment well what what do you expect you know you didn't protect yourself we're going in you didn't do your Post cleansing, you didn't do any of this stuff, and and you know you went in there, you started knocking on the spirit world because you're all in, you're all inquisitive, and 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 that, that, again, people who do tarot cards and Luigi boards, all these, you're actually trying to tap into someone else's realm. You're knocking on someone's door. If you go to someone's house, start knocking on the door, they're going to answer. Now, what do you want? What are you here? Right? You know, and and you don't know whose door you don't know whose door you're knocking on. Mm-hmm. You don't know who's behind that door. It could be it could be Dahmer. It could be anybody. Yeah. Right? You know, you don't know, right? So. So again, you know, this is what people don't understand. You know, oh, I want to be a paranormal investigator. I want to be a demonologist. Well, do you really know what you're asking? It's, it's not. This is not the first thing. This is do you know what you're actually asking. You know what you actually are doing. You're going in there and you're you're starting to use technology and then you're, you're going there and you're starting to knock on doors. You're, you're using psychics. You're using seances. You're doing all kinds of equipment. You're trying to you're trying to tap into things, and and you're, you're basically giving them consent to come on come on in come into the physical world and then, you know, then you cry, you cry foul and you say, oh my God, what have I done? You know, and, and, you know, they can't enter without our consent. They're not permitted. It's God that says free will. God, God will not even interfere in your life. He won't send angels for help unless you call for God. You call God for help, you pray, you ask for help, you ask for intercession, you get it. Otherwise, God will, will not interfere in your free will. Like manner, in, in, in a demonic or any other spiritual realm, whatever it might be, you know they will. They cannot interfere unless you give them consent, 
and 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 we do we we uh, with our actions, our evil that like we talked about earlier today, earlier on this interview. Mm-hmm. You know, way we 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 have our hopelessness, our our evil intent. Uh, we want to rob people. We want to you know we want we were envious of people. We're jealous. All these negative things. We're we're really in, in a sense inadvertently giving people consent. We're giving yeah. these the spirit world uh, consent to come and in, 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 in infiltrate our life. Um, like what Rick, you know, Sister Kier just mentioned, you know, her Reiki, you know, it changes, changes the energy into a positive one. I mean, a negative energy cannot dwell where a positive energy exists. That, that's basically common sense, right? So this is what she's changing the, the, the positive, the, the negative into a positive uh, environment for that individual, how they feel inside. Uh, everything's back into an alignment. Everything's supposed to be like the way it's supposed to be natural. So uh, it's very hard for a negative presence to to dwell in someone who's positive. So if you you know, it's just common sense. But you know, when you start knocking on on on, on uh, the spirit world and it's all negative and it's you know, I'm having a paranormal activity. I'm being scratched. I'm this and all that. You're that's a, that's a negative environment. Well, you know, you start to you start to to dwell in that. You start to um, you know, uh, uh, you know, like play around in that environment. Well, this is what this is what you this is what you're calling in, mm-hmm. right? You're, you're you're bringing that into yourself. So, again, this is what's this is the basic thing. But I mean, there's so many people out there that want to be involved in the paranormal. They're so fascinated with the paranormal, you know, and and all the evil things that are going on. I don't, I don't, I, I don't give evil an opportunity to to uh, or give it a platform, or give it energy, don't give it any power. Yeah. You know, I want to just stop it in its track. I want to just, you know, I want to beat it down. Um, but people out there, they, they they go to movies, you know. I mean, uh, I did a, par- a paranormal convention uh, down in Upper New State, New York, and, I, and a person in the audience raised his hand. I said, well, it's, well, if I watched the movie The Exorcist back in 1977, you know, would that, by watching the movie, would I become possessed? I said, well, what's the intent of, of watching the movie? Are you watching it because you just like horror movies? Or are you watching it for some other reason? And he says, well, I'm a paranormal investigator, so if I ever become, if I ever get involved where there's a demonic presence, I want to know what to do. Well, Hollywood's not teaching you what to do. It's you know, not a guidebook. <laughs> exactly, but but this guy, this guy honestly believed that if he saw the movie, yeah. that it would give him uh, the the, uh, the how to actually deal with the demonic. And so he wants to, you know. So you know, first of all, it, it, that's not the right way. It's not. It's, it's there's a lot of you know Hollywood involved in there. It's essentially you know it's it's. it's it's, it's all been glorified. Yeah. And, and, and they don't get it, right? And, but why are you even thinking that? I mean, you know, if you go into a situation like that and you, you, you're over you're over, over your head, you know, in, in, in a situation you can't handle, call for help. Well, they don't. Yeah. They just leave. They leave, the, they leave the client worse off than we find them. But, you know, they, but they, they, they like, oh, I'm a demonologist. Oh, I'm this. Oh, I'm that. And it's like, it's not a glamorous job. It really isn't. We don't get paid for this. I am a nurse. That's how I make my living. I don't get, it's not glamorous. It's dirty. I get spit on. I get pushed. I get, you know, yeah. like, like it's not a glamorous job. I didn't, well, 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 I That's just when he's hanging out with me, too. So. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> not, not very glamorous. Yeah. But. One, one more question. Uh, one more question before we wrap it up. I'm curious to get your guys' opinion sure. on this. Uh, is, is there an abundance of people out there that are possessed without even knowing it or, or have some sort of attachment? And this is kind of almost going full circle as to what I talked about in the beginning. I mean, you look at some of the headlines. Nurse charged with killing seven babies. Uh, Virginia man arrested yeah. after killing four people in home. Mm-hmm. 17-year-old accused of attacking yeah. a teen met on Snapchat and runs her over in a Walmart. I mean, these are just like, what, like, if you were... I mean, I get drugs. Drugs can make people do some pretty crazy shit that would also look evil. Um, and I could see it well, kind of working well, hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. But but is there? Well, let's, well, let's look at it. Yeah. Well, it, no, there is. I mean, yeah. there, there, I mean, I mean, if, if you go, it goes it goes hand in hand. If you go back, if you go back from the history, you know, when when they took prayer, they took prayer out of the school, right? Then kids started killing kids. You never saw kids kill kids before that. Yeah. You never saw kids going to school with a rifle and start shooting other kids for the hell for the heck of it. And you take prayer out of you take prayer out of the school system, which they did, right? They took prayer out of school, made it all you know sentient, made it all a neutral, you know, no religion in the school, no more. We used to say prayers, you know, uh, you know, used to do the Our Father every morning. I remember when I was a young kid, you know, we, we all had a chance to go in on the microphone, and that's all, you know. And if you weren't Christian, then you just sort of just say your own prayer or whatever. We used to all go to the auditorium. We used to go to the auditorium for our prayers and then back to class. You never saw kids killing kids back then. All of a sudden, people are killing kids. 
Um, you know, you took the church and the state, they separated church and state, you know, and you start seeing the courts uh, change the rules. All of a sudden, you, you, you start seeing, you know, uh, other things in the world occur. So you, you always goes hand in hand with, with what you're seeing. You know, you see all these mass shootings and mass killings. You know, this, why are people doing that? Like, you know, so there has to be some kind of influence. There has to be something that, you know, made that person want to do that. You know, so who's to say? I think there are people who are afflicted, who are, uh, who for some reason, either being in, being involved with wrong people or just maybe uh, uh, things that maybe uh, it, it made them think, you know, that they sh- should go and do that. You know, I, I don't know. Like, it's it's hard to tell. Again, until someone actually calls my son or sister and says, hey, listen, I think I'm possessed or there's something going on or I got scratches in my body and I need help, unless I, I get the call for help, we don't know. There must be people out there that don't even realize what that is. You know, yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, the, the right of exorcism wasn't even brought out until the, the movie 1977 when the, the exorcist movie came out. People were like, oh, my God. They were like, horrified. They were scared to death. Mm-hmm. But before that, you never heard about exorcism. But it's been in the church for centuries. They just, just sure. got rid of it. They just don't bother with it. Yeah. You know? It, no? it, so again, it, it really it makes I, you I, wonder because you look at some of this stuff and you go, I, I mean... It's just, it's beyond, uh, you know, the, the pale of imagination. It's not just like one every now and then like you had in the, back in the day, back in the good old days of Dahmer. Uh, you got this stuff everywhere. <laughs> all one guy. Uh, one, yeah. I know. I mean, it literally makes you well, say like back in the good old days of Dahmer. <laughs> no. Well, well, we watch it. We've got, we've, we've got more horror movies out there. Yeah. We've got more demonic movies. We, we've, we've, we've glorified the devil on the TV. We, you know, we make, uh, we make, you know, shootings. Uh, like, I mean, you watch a movie, they say there's something like, uh, an 800 sh- violent acts in one movie, which we don't even recognize. Sure. And the kids and all the video games that are out. So if you, if you look hand in hand at all the things from television, to video games, everything that we're exposed to, you know, like what? What do we like? You know, before that, we didn't have any. We didn't have this number of situations. All of a sudden, you know, the TV is not putting these wonderful movies out there. Everybody, you know, you know, they're, they're they're killing everybody, and you know, and and then you know, then you've got the video games that are so violent. Yeah. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you ask yourself, why why did a kid go into school with a shotgun and kill twenty kids? You know, where did he get that from? Well, you know, he, you know, and you know, and you know, who? How do I know where he got it from? Um, but we're seeing that 1950 or 60, yeah. you know, and yeah, yeah, you know, then all of a sudden these one these, these video games come out, and all this television and all this these movies, the horror movies, things are coming out. And like I said, there's, there's a guy there in the audience who thinks the movie The Exorcist 1977 is a handbook. It's not a handbook. It's it's you know there is no spinning head. I've never seen a woman spin her head yet. I mean, I'll let you know if I do. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't seen that yet. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but but this guy, this guy, this guy obviously thinks this is real yeah. and that, that this is actually happening. And they're the feeling they're like a spider. They're, they're, they're walking on the ceiling or down the stairs upside down. I mean, they're, this is what they're thinking. It's this is mm-hmm. Hollywood, and this is a lot and a lot of paranormal, a lot of paranormal show. Right? You know, they they add a lot. They add a lot of content because you know, honestly, I'll be honest with you, an exorcism is not is not fantastic. It's yeah. kind of boring, actually. It's it's you not going you know, to if, yeah. if it's done right. Not going to drive subscriptions to Netflix. I mean, I, you, you, uh, I'm, I mean, I, I, I've got, I've got pictures where exactly you, you can see the eyes change, you can see some things change, and I've got pictures to, of the transformation. But it's nothing, nothing that you know. Like I said, Netflix is going to want to call and say, "Let's do this," right? Yeah. So they add a lot of stuff to this, and then people, people watch TV and they think, "Well, oh, this is great," you know, "I want to do this, I want to do this." Well, it's not glamorous. It really isn't. It's, it's, it's kind of, it's actually kind of boring to be honest with you. But yeah. it needs to get done. It's, yeah. an, it's, it's, it's an important thing. It needs to get done. People take it seriously. People are really af- affected. It's real life, and it's not movie life. And 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 uh, you know, we watch this stuff on TV, and we watch this stuff on uh, on video games, and, and they think, yeah, it's okay to, to kill or whatever. It's okay to, you know, to have uh, revenge on your neighbor and, and whatever and, and and stuff. And and then of course add in your current environment, the economics, you know, and uh, the pandemic and all the other things just to, to help fuel this. And then you've got a kid going to, you know, going around killing uh, the kids. And, and no also reason. the level of the, the number of people that have stopped going to church, say from like the 60s compared to now, is huge, right? Yeah. Like the, the, right. that used to be part of people's lives. They would go to church on Sundays for services, right? Sure. And that doesn't happen so much anymore. Not many people go to services. You know, some churches have had to close because there's 
parish was too small. And, you know, I always say that I don't care where your butt is on Sunday, but, you know, it'd be nice if you prayed to whatever higher power you believe in, because when you pray, especially if a people, a group of people are praying together, it raises the vibration, you know, it makes that positive energy come out even, even more so. So, but there's definitely more evil in the world and it's some of it is nature versus nurture. You know, I've, I find that there's a lot more psychopaths and narcissists out there that you'll come across and they feel very different when you're trying to read them. Um, because they are very convincing, right? They've got that mask on and they yeah. think they, they can fool you. Um, but then eventually it comes down and it's like, okay, I see you for what you really are. But um, there's definitely more. I mean, my son had an oppression I when I was not long after I took my vows. And it, that was the only time I've really ever been afraid in the paranormal because I was by myself with him. I was just a new sister and, you know, black orbs came up the stairs and went for him. And he was like, he was, you know, there was something in him that shouldn't have been in him. <laughs> Put it like that. And it was like, it was up to me to, it was up to me to get it out of him. And I think that was a test, honestly. I think I was trying to get scared out of the ministry. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, that was, that was part of it. Evil, that evil was trying to like go, okay, let's, let's scare the crap out of her and see if she still wants to hang around, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, it just, I don't, I don't like, uh, negative energy and they're bullies and I don't like that. You know, I got bullied when I was a kid and it's the same kind of feeling when I lived in a house that was infested before I even got into the paranormal, you know, the people are like, how did you live there? And I'm like, I don't know. I just did. It was my house. And I made sure that it was well known. It was my house. And then no uncertain terms was it to ever touch my child, you know, um, ever. <laughs> yeah. And it got to the point that it would it would hide from me. Um, but I mean, I had a really crazy, crazy haunting. Like Plato went into that house and he was like, who in the F sleeps in this room? I'm like, that would be the Thunderdome. That's my room. <laughs> like, that's, where all the, that's where all the bad stuff yeah. happens, you know? <laughs> He's leaning on the bed going, oh my God, I feel sick. I'm like, yeah, try living here. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah, it was bad. Yeah, it was a bad house. But anyway, like I said, it's just this, when people live this way all the time, they think it's normal. They think it's, it's just natural. My life sucks because it's natural. No, your life doesn't need to suck. You know, you can, you know, you can, you can change things, and it's all about it's all coming down between negative and positive. You know, you just need to be positive. If we all just had a positive outlook, um, you know, I think things will just change automatically. Just like I said, evil cannot evil is negative, and negative cannot dwell where positive exists. So if we all just changed our, our, our outlook to be more positive, you, it, it would be very hard for them to dwell in that environment. You know, I know. And so, so this is why this is why we use the blessed objects, the blessed, you know, the blessed water, the salt, the, the blessed metals, the medallions, and I put them in around the house and the crucifixes in the Bible because it makes it's, it's supposed to make negative uncomfortable, so they not so they don't stay, they leave. Mm -hmm. So that's the whole point, right? You want to make your environment as positive. You have family dinners, you have family prayer time. This is all positive. They don't like that stuff. They, they, they'll leave. They'll just they'll just leave. But you know they don't. Unfortunately, they you know everybody's on their cell phone. They're all like the whole family sits in the dining dining room table and they're all on their cell phone. No one's talking to each other. There's no more communication. You go to a to the mall and they're all in the in the in the, uh, in, in the food court and 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 they're all sitting beside each other and they're all on their phone. Mm -hmm. You know and and no one's talking to each other. No one's actually you know or or like you know. The, you know, you call your kids down, hey, you know, dinner's ready. No one answers. You just text everybody. And they all come running down. <laughs> they, yeah. like, you know, so, you know, it, you know, dinner's ready on a text and they all come running down the stairs. But you, you call them and they don't come. So it's, 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 it's just the whole environment's changed. Everything's just, you know, we've all, we're all introverts, introverted ourselves into our technology. And, and we've, we, this stuff's supposed to make us, make us a little bit more, our life easier. It's actually, it's made it worse. But it is what it is. So uh, it just, people just need to, uh, to change and that's really what we're teaching we're not just going there to exercise people we're trying, but we want to lead we want to teach them how to how to change their lives and, and and do a new journey and you know and 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 carry on forward so that they don't get affected and they can they continue living a wholesome lives and the kids and everything it's not just coming in anymore and just throwing water and salt and saying okay the demon's gone see you later we want to actually teach them elevate them self-empower them 
it's it's all that we want to teach them you know we want to do videos on facebook we want to, uh, we have a youtube channel we're working on we want to start doing videos to help people think about gratitude forgiveness you know start thinking about some of the basic things that really will make quite a difference in our lives we just because right now it's all fear mongering the news the media you know there's no there's no future there's no life there's no nothing you know uh, to look forward to and that's not true it's not true at all that wraps up part two of our conversation with Bishop Plato Angelakis and Sister Kia. Be sure to check out the link to their YouTube channel in the episode notes. Until next time, for all of us at The Grave Talks, I am Tony Bruschi. Thanks for listening.